In this tutorial, we will talk about data portal access. So in order to access the data portal, um, there are a few settings we need to make sure uh, we, we uh, filled out. So for first time users, uh, in order to get access to the data portal, we have to go under utilities and you have here the data portal access. So as soon as you select it, um, the data portal navigator will open up. Now, of course, the first time users who haven't set up the data portal accounts will get this message. All you would have to do is select here, open the ePlan settings now. And in the ePlan settings, you can go ahead and type in your username and password and repeat it. So in this case here, I can say data or call user, and I'll give it a password and repeat it. And if this user hasn't been created yet, we can always click on the create account and the create account will uh, give us either some messages here, some error messages, basic, basically letting me know that my password hasn't been accepted, or it will let me know that the user account has not been uh, created so or exists already. So here I'll just add this. And I will click on create account. And if this this user already exists, so obviously I cannot use it. So I'm just going to change it here, data portal Try that. Now, if the uh, user does not exist, like in this case, this particular username uh, has not been created, you will get this uh, create account uh, confirm your registration. So you will have to input the information that is required. Anything that has a star on it, you have to fill it up. As soon as it's filled out, you agree to the terms and you can select here confirm. Once that has been confirmed, you will have access to the data portal and uh, you, will, you can start to use it and benefit from its use. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use my default one. And I'll just retype that again and just select OK. And once your account has been uh, accepted, you will have access to the data portal as you can see it here and I can go ahead and start using it so I can go over to a uh, schematic sheet and in a schematic uh, project uh, maybe there are certain things that I need to bring in um, I can actually uh, go ahead and select the items that I want one of the things that you could do here I'm just going to create a new page new multi-line page call it PLC and I can type here on the search field 17 V6-IV16 if I'm looking for a particular device and I'll have access to the information I'll go ahead and grab the North American one and I have these functions here to bring it in so I will be able to select here insert macro if I do this the function will download the macro from the data portal and you can go ahead and place it wherever you want um, but it won't it will just reside in your project and not in your parts database so if I use the second button which is this one right here I click on it it will actually download that information so it'll download the information and also stick uh, the device um, um, into uh, or stick the device uh, onto my uh, cursor so here if I have the device will stick to my cursor just like before and I can go ahead and place it and by hitting the tab key I can cycle through different um, uh, orientations or different representations that this macro has. Um, you do have the capability of assigning uh, it just importing the part or adding it to your shopping basket. Once you've assigned this part to the shopping basket, so it's been added to the shopping cart, you can go up here to your account information and under your account information, you have here the displayed shopping cart and it will list all the devices or all the elements that you have um, pre-selected prior and are in your shopping bas basket ready to be downloaded. And in, with these functions here, you can actually go ahead and edit the shopping cart if there's certain things that you want to modify and change, or you can actually import a device list. Um, and you can also import all six parts to your parts database. So uh, using this function here, import device list is very interesting because if you go under project data, parts and device, and you have here the device list, um, when you bring that in, so as it's being populated in, 
Um, it's empty right now and I can actually go from here import to the device list it will import all those parts into my list here and in my device list I have the quantity of the elements that I want the description of the device and I can actually go ahead and from here I can grab it drag and drop it out and as soon as I place this uh, component and I number the device this component has now been associated and now it's uh, letting me know that in my device list that part has been already used so there's no more um, there's no more um, spare parts that I can actually use I'd have to you know bring in another one and download it in so you do have the capability of uh, bringing in all these different functions from the data portal so to access the data portal make sure that your settings are correct that you have uh, the information has been associated correctly so that would be under the user settings under management data portal make sure you have this in another recommendation is to set the timeout instead of 10 seconds or 20 seconds the default and make it a little bit longer depending on the kind of bandwidth that you have at your office or at work or at home uh, you might need a little bit more uh, leniency here so putting a timeout of 120 seconds is uh, is pretty it seems to work very well. So uh, this has been a tutorial to uh, access the data portal and start to use it.